Yes, absolutely. Yes, you are audible. Uh, a very good evening to all of you and greetings to everyone. On behalf of the Computer Science and Engineering Department of IEM, me, Dr. Lydia Ghosh, and my colleague, Professor Onindita Dash Bhattacharji, would like to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed speaker for today's research talk session, that is a Dr. Triporna Shah. The title of the talk is Applying Machine Intelligence in Brain Computer Interfacing. It's our great privilege to have Dr. Sriporna Shaha with us. Dr. Shaha is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering of Maulana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology, West Bengal, India. Early in her career, she received her ME and PhD degree from Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering Department of Jadavpur University, India. She was associated as a faculty with Jadavpur University and two other institutions. She has more than nine years of experience in teaching and research. Her research area includes artificial intelligence, image processing, machine learning, and recently she is giving more focus on deep learning. She has over 70 publications in international journals and conference proceedings, including IEEE, Elsevier, Springer, etc. She is the author of a book on gesture recognition published by Studies in Computational Intelligence, Springer. She is also the reviewer for many international journals. Her major research proposal is accepted for startup grant under UGC Basic Scientific Research Grant. Not only that, she also got university seed money for setting up her library, sorry, laboratory in Macout. We are truly honored to have you as today's speaker. Now I would like to request Dr. Shaha to deliver her lecture. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, and a very good evening to all of you. Uh, so am I audible and uh, visible clearly? Yes, ma'am, you are audible and also visible. Okay, uh, so I'm going to start the screen sharing. Uh, the screen is visible? Yes. Okay, so um, dear students, today we are going to discuss about the topic where brain interfacing will be uh, done with the computer with the help of some machine intelligent algorithms so uh, for this particular talk we are going to discuss first the talk will be started with the brief discussion about the concept of ai and ml then we are going to shortly uh, discuss about the brain computer interfacing or bci then whatever be the work that has been done in this particular field that will be discussed and today as the time is very short we will concentrate on one particular application of bci bci has tremendous application in different domains for betterment of the mankind but today we are going to discuss about one particular one topic after the theoretical part of that, we are going to discuss the what are the experimental results we obtain, and then we are going to conclude this discussion. So first, uh, we are going to start with the introduction to AI and ML, that is artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. So what happens in AI or artificial intelligence is that it is a scientific field that is concerned with the development of algorithms that allow computers to learn without being explicitly programmed. So 
we have heard about the term of intelligence or we can say that is this particular person is intelligent when we can say that the person has certain much more capacity of doing certain things than the others that is we are talking about human intelligence if this human intelligence can be programmed to the machines such that the machine can do the works on the behalf of the computers and for each and every task a program need not to be written but the computer can itself learn from the environment then we can say that is the artificial agent is intelligent enough so that is the artificial intelligence that is transferring of intelligence from the humans to the artificial agents by some programs these artificial agents can be in the form of hardware hardware can be the robots or in the software format also like the google search here also searching we are doing with the help of some ai algorithms but there is no proper hardware is designed for that it is in the software so there can be software and hardware both type of artificial agents next we are going to discuss about machine learning so this is a subset of ai which focuses on methods that learn from data and make predictions on unseen data so how that can be done so suppose we are talking about a problem of biometric facial image recognition what can be the application of that suppose we are doing this biometric system of facial image recognition for one specific college suppose your college iim so here you have several employees in associated in this college as well as we have students so the employee suppose one particular employee is one of your teacher the teacher will be given access to his or her room as well as to the classrooms but the students will not be given uh, access to the rooms of the teachers as well as there are different departments in the college one department is suppose the examination cell the teachers are not going to be given the permission without having the permission they cannot enter the examination room as well as the employees those are working on that um, uh, examination cell they cannot come to the teachers room without the permission so that is the biometric system we are talking about now in this biometric system we are trying to suppose develop with the help of facial image so from that facial image uh what can be the features that can be extracted the features can be the structure of the eye the color of the eyeball the structure of the eyebrows the structure of the ear as well as the nose how the shape of the nose is there the shape of the forehead the overall shape of the face as well as there can be feature like the contour of the lip these can be the feature so what is feature feature is those underlying uh, parameters of one particular face by which by that underlying uh, parameters you can separate one particular face from other that is the feature so these features like the features from my face that will be labeled with my identity suppose my name from your another teacher Uh, another uh, features can be extracted from her face and that person identity will be labeled for those features so we are first before uh, doing or do prediction we have to train the model so as we are training the model the data set that required for that that is the training data and here in the training data we have the feature set and each feature set is associated with their corresponding identity of the subject here your professor so each of the training data are labeled so that is here the training data are in the label format 
based on the label data this goes to any sort of machine learning algorithm algorithms can be support vector machine knrs never any or the neural network whatever any particular machine learning algorithm will be trained with the help of training data after tuning of the parameters of the machine learning algorithm model will be learned after the model is learned you can fit the model with the unknown data from the testing data set and prediction can be done so in broad way data set can be of two types training data as well as testing data training data by which training will be given and testing by which you are going to test the system apart from that there is another data set known as validation data set that's going to validate the system performance so after training data set model has been trained then you can validate the model with the help of validation data set now we are talking about learning the model from the data set that is the training data set so this learning can be done the three ways one is the supervised learning that we have discussed so far that is learning with the help of labeled data here the supervised learning can be of two types one is the classification another one is the regression what is classification in the classification the output labels are discrete like the problem we have discussed of the image classification each of the subject names or the identity are discrete but for the regression the output values are in the continuous range suppose you have been told to predict the consumption of ice cream based on that day's temperature so that is uh, what number of uh, ice cream are going to be still and the day's temperature if the temperature is much more higher much more number of ice cream can be sold on that day that is the regression that is the output levels are in the continuous range ice cream can be sold one day of 100 unit the next day can be 101 unit and the next day it can be 99 unit another day it can be 200 unit any value it can take the output layer that is the regression but for the problem of email classification like email can be classified into inbox spam trash so these are one fixed output levels but that is the discrete output levels are there that is we are doing here classification apart from the supervised learning there is another one that is the unsupervised learning unsupervised means without the help of any supervision or without the help of any teacher here the training data set are in unlabeled format that is from the training data set we need to cluster similar data points suppose data points are given and the data points are told to be clustered into three groups then here you can check over here we are grouping the data points into yellow uh, blue and red cluster apart from this type of clustering there is another clustering that is known as reinforcement learning reinforcement learning that happens in the format of reward or punishment like your parent have been told you that is if you get more than 90% marks in mathematics you will be given ice cream and if you don't get uh, marks greater than 70% you will be scolded or you will not be allowed to watch television so if you do something great then you will be given some reward if you are doing something bad you will be given some punishment this is we can say the reinforcement learning next we are going to talk about deep learning it applies a multi layer process for learning rich hierarchical feature that is the data representation so this deep learning is another subset of machine learning so machine learning is a subset of ai and deep learning is subset of machine learning so here it can be asked that is 
what is deep in deep land deep, that is the number of layers that is the deep land if the problem is much more complicated then much more layers are needed to solve that problem then you can have the solution in deep land suppose over here from this particular image of a of an indoor room you have been told to identify whether there is a ceiling fan is there there is a cupboard or there or a bed is there that you need to find out so here you can apply the machine uh, sorry the deep learning algorithm first the machine is trying to identify the low level features so these are the low level features that are the edges from that mid level features so these can be identified then the high level features like whether there is a ceiling fan or there is a cupboard or there is a window that need to be identified and then trainable classifier is there from that you are going to get the output so this is the basic concept of deep learning so having said that we are moving to the introduction of brain computer interface so in recent year this application of bci is an emerging technology that translate the human intention that is what the human is trying to do human thinks what he wants from in or her brain from the brain signals that is understanding the brain signals that had become the control signals for the robots this can allow the disabled person to interact with the external environment without movement giving any proper movement of the hand or leg so uh, what can be our targeted subject over here that can be the patients patient with certain neurological diseases like als stroke or spinal cord injury and many more such so in these type of person they don't have the capacity to move his or her hand or leg but they have that intention to move so thinking about moving to go in the straight direction or in the right or in the left that can be interfaced with the conventional interfacing devices like the mouse or keyboard if the person is not a disabled one but for a disabled person uh, it's not possible for that person to move the mouse or the keyboard but the person can think so then we can develop the brain control system that can give the better way to live their daily life that we are trying to do over here so what are the objectives on this particular work that is first is to design of rehabilitative aid that requires seamless interaction between the task executing output device like the robot and the bci operator like the subject that is a disabled person without cognitive disruption so this particular bci work with the help of machine intelligence that going to give us an automated approach that should have this particular work should have very less or no intervention of humans in the entire process why no intervention as the subject is disabled we cannot ask the person to move his or her hand or leg as the person is disabled the person can only think in her or his brain that what he wants to do what are the type of tasks that can be done that will be going in the later side and while designing this particular work we need to keep in mind that the time required to execute the task should be less like i am thinking to bring a glass of water towards me this work need to be done within certain second interval it cannot be after one hour the glass of water cannot be brought to me so these are the objective of this research work so in designing of this research work first we have to concentrate on a uh, understanding the brain commands or the brain signals to understand the brain signal we can have 
one sensor that is electroencephalogram that is the eeg system so oh, our brain has several regions like over here you can check frontal parietal occipital temporal and so on each of the region is associated with particular task like the task of planning the task of doing something as well as task for seeing something suppose i am seeing something so that is my occipital lobe will be activated if i am planning to do some work then parietal lobe will be activated based on that we can understand that is which part of the brain is currently activated now the brain part can be activated now from this activation of the brain part we are going to get the brain waves now the brain wave can be of in the different ranges like from the gamma beta alpha theta and delta each ranges in the brain wave that are associated with one type of application like we are talking about something related to creativity then we are going to get the brain commands or the brain signals in the range of the theta wave brain wave suppose some person is sleeping uh, then another brain wave will be act from that range brain wave we are going to get so that is the brain we have considered so we have the brain waves now to understand or to uh, recognize the brain wave uh, we need to place certain electrodes in the human brain now placing of the electrodes in the human brain that can be of two ways one is the invasive one another one is the non invasive one invasive one happens when we cut the scalp of the brain and place the electrode within the human brain that is the invasive one but in a technological university it's not possible to have those type of invasive uh, electroencephalogram as that requires medical intervention so what we can have we can have the eeg sensor in the non invasive way that is then the electrodes will be placed above our scalp and from the scalp the brain signals will be recognized or collected and then the brain waves will be processed and the next step will be carried out here you can check the 1020 international electrode placement system for an eeg sensor here the a stands for frontal c for cortex and p for parietal this is how the electrodes are placed over here a p for prefrontal so these are the names of the brain lobes we already know so electrodes are placed and from each of the electrode we are understanding what are the brain wave so the brain waves are going to give us electrical signals in the micro range from this electrical signal uh, the signal need to be processed and the next task will be carried out based on that here the electrodes needs to be placed in the ear to get the neutral signal based on that comparison with the neutral signal you can understand how much activated one particular brain region is that is the eeg sensor now the task that we are going to be done with the help of the eeg signal that is we are going to instruct the robotic arm to act based on the eeg signal so this is you can check over here a design of an robotic arm this particular robotic arm has four joint as well as there is one end effector that is going to do the work of the grasping so this robotic arm is similar to our human arm in our human arm as there are several joints are there like the shoulder shoulder joint the elbow the wrist the palm position joint as well as there are the fingers to grasp different objects 
if we are trying to do any artificial arm that arm should relate to the human arm suppose we are trying to uh, create one prosthetic arm to design one prosthetic arm it should look alike with the human arm as well as it should work like the human arm so this is the one basic simple example of the robotic arm now in our human arm uh, each of the joints are connected with the help of tissue muscles here also these are the joints are connected with different links here it is basically our core body part that is the base for the robotic arm and these are the links like link 1 link 2 link 3 link 4 and link 5 this is basically the fingers that is the end effector here each of the joint need to be uh, act like the human arm they should do task like the human arm and these joints need to be given instructions to move here the movement of the joints can be done by giving the instruction of moving clockwise or anti clockwise direction within the range of 0 to 180 degree the joints will be given the control signal in the terms of different uh, movement with different degree angle degrees like this joint has been told to move to clockwise 30 degree so it will move in the clockwise 30 degree angle so this is the basic design of any robotic arm here you can check this is the experimental setup in our human computer introduction lab in macau west bengal here you can check that is the subject is wearing brain tech traveler eeg acquisition device these are the electrodes you can check over here this uh, setup is connected to this particular desktop over here and these are the eeg signals that are being occurred currently from the scalp of the subject now this brain tech traveler system has 21 electrode channels placed all over our skull and here the data has been acquired for 25 minute duration based on data collection protocol uh, that is built for the aim of controlling the virtual object with multiple cycles that handle different conditions when the subject tries to control the object so and this signal acquisition the participants were shown images for corresponding motor action so what are the motor action suppose the subject wants to move the right direction left direction up forward direction backward direction so here in this particular laptop screen the task are currently performed by the subject that is instructions are given the person is not moving her hand but the person is thinking in her hand that i want to move this particular object to the right position so the object is moving on that based on that we are doing the experiment so we have told that in the brain region each region is associated with one particular task and the activity of the region can be vary from one region to the another region suppose i am doing one task of a uh, vision so my occipital lobe will be activated much more rather than the other lobes here the range of the voltage that is the activation region uh, activation levels or for this case of the brain map that is given these are the activation levels so this means that is the violet color that means the low activated and this is maroon color that basically means it is highly activated so from low to the high this range of voltage values you can get and that can be shown over here in the brain map here you can check in the brain map certain brain regions are activated more where this is the yellow ones are there so yellow is over here it is activated and some regions are in the light blue color here 
so these regions are very less activated so overall this brain is medium level activation sorry median level activation of the occipital parietal and prefrontal lobes so if you can identify the activation levels of the brain then you can uh, know that is what type of task the person is trying to do and based on that next steps can be carried out so this brain map we can get from the brain tech traveler system apart from that there are other softwares like s lorata software where this brain map activation levels can be generated so this is the brain map now we have talked so much about the theory let us have some application that we have designed in our human computer interaction lab with the help of some real time videos so let us look at some videos over here uh, okay before starting that uh, um, ma'am can you say that is whether my camera is active or not no no ma'am uh, can i just rejoin can you give me one or two minute yes you can okay Uh, yes am i audible now yeah yes, yes. i am audible i am visible okay uh, so sorry for the interruption so we are talking about to check some videos over here so just check this is that we have told about that is some robotic arm here in our lab we have this open manipulator x so this robotic arm you can check over here it has certain joints so we have discussed that is there are different joints are there so this is one particular joint this is the finger of the human arm like there is a there are two fingers uh, madam sorry for the interruption have you shared uh, any okay okay sorry i haven't shared the screen sorry i think so next to this Yes, right now uh, the screen, uh, the video is there, right? Yeah, now it's visible. Oh, sorry. Uh, so these are the joints, and this is the links that are connected between different joints. And this robotic arm is connected with its controller. Here we have Arduino board. Based on that, signals are given to this robot to act. So now playing the video, you can check over here. This is the Arduino we have told. In the computer screen, now you can check. This is the structure of the open manipulator X. These are the different joints it has, and these are the actuators like the fingers it has. And these are the controller for this open manipulator X. As we have told, there are four joints are there: joint one, joint two, joint three, and joint four. And these are the grippers. and each joint will be controlled with the help of the clockwise or anti clockwise movement of the angles like the degree of movement that will be given to the controller here you can check the how much the angle it need to be moved to the clockwise or anti clockwise that can be changed over here so these are for the joint 1 joint 2 joint 3 and joint 4 and the if you say check this same joint angle button then that information will be processed or passed to the open manipulator x and the robot will be moved in such a fashion if you want to have the gripper on or close 
then set keeper function is there. This is the control interface for the open manipulated X. If you switch on the, or change the joint angles for different uh, position of the robot, then the robot will be moved accordingly. So this is for the open manipulated X. And next we have another video over here. This is my research scholar. She is currently doing PhD under my supervision, Ahona Ghosh. She is wearing the Brain Tech Traveler system over here. And here you can check the brain maps. These are the activation levels of the brain maps and the corresponding EG signals that are being captured currently. Based on the EG signals, uh, it will be processed and that will be passed to the open manipulator X or the robotic arm and the robotic arm will do as per the brain commands. Here you can check over here, the subject is trying to move the robotic arm towards the bottle of water. So what's the working we are trying to do over here? The subject is not going to move her hands, but she is going to think in her brain that she wants to have the bottle of water towards her. So the robotic arm will try to do that. So the robotic arm is going towards the bottle of the water and then fetch that water bottle with the help of its fingers and then it will bring it towards her. So this total experiment you can check over here. The subject is thinking and the corresponding EEG signals are being recorded as well as they are continuously processed and the robotic arm is now connected in a wired fashion. It is wired connected with the desktop and the robotic arm is moving. This result we are showing that is the best result we got in our lab. It is not always the case. Many times the bottle fell from the table itself. So there are many wrong atoms will be there. If the wrong atoms will be there, classification classifier can be trained properly based on the wrong result. And then this is the best result we obtain to grab the bottle of water. Now the robot is trying to uh, grip the bottle and then it will place the water bottle in front of her and she is not moving her hand you can check what she is doing she is looking at the robotic arm and thinking what she would have been done with her hand and this is the hand movement translation which given to the robotic arm our hand has different degrees of freedom Degrees of freedom means how our hand is going to move that is different than the movement of the robotic arm. This robotic arm degrees of freedom is very less in compared to our uh, uh, arm but that are translated that is how our hand will be moved that is translated to the movement of the robotic arm. So now we are coming to the again the theoretical parts over here. So here you can check these are the some literatures that are existed before uh, we started working on this domain. So the work ranges from 2013 to 2020. Here different types of the EEG devices have been used from the emotive to another different type of open BCI brain cap. Those are several types of EEG sensors are there. Each have their corresponding number of sampling rate as well as different number of electrodes. Next, different filtering and feature extraction methods have been applied like PCA principal component analysis to wavelength transformation to first Fourier transformation, Butterworth, etc. Then several other classification algorithms can be done. Like the simple one is the perceptron. Then can be a linear discriminant analysis, LDA can be there, SBM support vector machine, uh, KNN, KNRS neighbor, and then multilayer perceptron. These can be several classifiers that can be employed over here. Now, 
what the person is trying to do that are the class levels like i am trying to do to move forward or backwards there are two class levels are there if the subject is trying to do this that is forward backward left and right so there are four classes are there so based on that each of the research methodology that we have studied in each of the literatures different class levels are there and each word have this amount of accuracy they have obtained after getting inspiration from these literatures this is the technical solution that have been proposed in one of our research paper so this what we are doing for one subject or patient the patient is lacking uh, uh, in movement of his or her arm the subject is suffering from prosthetic damage in her hand and the subject is trying to bring the glass of water from a nearby table to drink it so as the person cannot move her hand the person will be thinking in her head that i want to if i could have moved my arm i could have done it with this type of actions taken by my hand based uh, on that thinking in the brain uh, data is processed first the data is collected using the eeg sensor electroencephalogram sensor then the data is processed and that are given to the robotic arm or the artificial limb to grasp the glass so this is a very simple scenario of controlling an artificial limb based on our brain signals and this can be a very effective and vital rehabilitative application for the persons who are suffering from the parietal or motor cortex disorders this can solve the problem of prosthetic issues uh so here first we need the eeg acquisition that is data need to be acquired then as the eeg signals have many noise like the blinking of the eyes that is known as the artifact this is a very predominant uh, noise present in the eeg signal that need to be filtered out now as already told in uh, in our own device we have 21 channel but if we are doing for one particular work then all the brain is not activated certain parts of the brain is going to be activated so we need to process the data from those certain parts so from those regions the electrodes that are associated in that brain region that need to be sele selected so that is the channel selection so selecting of the channels that only needed to form our metadata we have acquired data from 21 channels but we can need the data from only 15 channels that are sufficient enough to get our work done so the remaining data need to be removed to get the better accuracy in lesser amount of time after selecting of the channel we need to extract the features from it after the feature extraction uh, the motor imagery classification is done and based on that robot is moved and here this brain commands that we are taking that are the mi that is motor imagery brain waves from image the term is imagery that is we are uh, thinking of doing something we are not actually moving our arm but we are thinking of doing it so that are the mi signals so now we are coming to the experimental results first we are going to show you that is from the af3 channel we have already told that are different re, uh, re, uh, different intensities of uh, brain wave we can get the brain wave can be like alpha beta delta and theta here you can check for check for only one specific channel of af3 different uh, intensities in different range of the brain wave that we are getting now for each of the uh, wave form we are applied the feature extraction method very commonly known as power spectral density that is the psd 
so each of the waveform is giving us different feature values different results in the psd for one specific channel of af3 so these are the features that we have extracted over here now our classification we have done using the random forest method in this random forest these are the hyper parameters that we have taken that are giving us the base we are not giving into the much detail uh, um, of the random forest model but just simple uh, hyperparameter values are given that is what are the combination of the hyperparameter values are given uh, we have very little amount of time so it's not feasible to go into the detail of the classifier so we are skipping this for now on next what we have done so we have done this experiment for four different user user a user b user c and user d each of the user is giving different accuracy result here you can check over here user b you are getting the most accurate accuracy accurate result second is for the user d so accuracy values are can be obtained over here next this is one performance metric that is the accuracy A apart from the performance metric of accuracy there are several other performance metrics like precision recall f1 score apart from the, there are others like roc that we are going to discuss and several others are that auc and etc so we are here considered the four performance metrics like accuracy precision recall and f1 score each can be obtained from the classification matrix in the classification matrix uh, uh, we can form the confusion matrix here in the confusion matrix there are four quadrants are there named as true positive true negative false positive and false negative what should what is our actual value and what is our predicted value based on that four quadrants are there and from that we can form the confusion matrix from the confusion matrix this performance metric can be obtained here for each of the user how much accurate the result are there and what are the condition of other performance matrix that is shown over here this is the accuracy on training set so that is we have a training data by which our model is trained we are you having the same data to test the model so we are getting 100% accuracy over here but when we have a separate data set name as the test data the accuracy falls and the best accuracy we are getting over is here okay so these are the results for four users this is the confusion matrix for here we have considered three class problem three class means that is uh, uh, moving forward moving backward and no operation like the robotic arm will be stopped for a three class this will be a three cross three matrix in the confusion matrix and for four different users uh, four different confusion matrix we have obtained over here now uh, we have done the classification using the random forest apart from the random forest there are several other classifiers those are very commonly available one is the k nearest neighbor knn another one is the feed forward neural network fpnn another is sbm that is the support vector machine having a great result is not sufficient enough we have to compare our result with other existing classifiers as well here you can check with the help of five different performance metrics like accuracy precision recall f1 score and error rate the same uh, eg data has been classified with the help of four different classifiers and the comparative results is given over here in this part chart 
now as already i have discussed that there are several works are already present in the literature so uh, like the, the 2015 work are these two and then 2020 is what is there now here what is this this bar chart view shows the accuracy result for our proposed one as well as three existing ones so you can check our proposed work is giving us best result here now this is the accuracy now getting a accurate accurate result is not always sufficient i can get accurate result of 99.9 percent .9 in two hours of time but one person can get 97 percent accuracy in two minutes of time so what will be the best choice not only getting the accuracy time is also a very vital factor getting accurate result in a very less amount of time is necessary so not only accuracy we have compared the computational time in seconds and you can check our work is giving us least amount of computational time with respect to all the three competing algorithms over here now accuracy divided by the time this is this curve that give us the justification that is having a higher accuracy in lesser time for which algorithm we are getting it so this is the case over here so this is how you to compare with the existing literature and proof that your work is better than the already existing ones. So those are the performance metrics. Apart from that, we can have the need to give the statistical validation to our work. Statistical validation can be done using several statistical analysis. Like here, we have given the result for the t-test. Apart from that, Friedman, Bonfrey, Dantes, several others are there. For the t-test, here are the values that is given over here. That are the mean values of each of the performance metrics for 25 runs. And these values are the standard deviation values. That is the values that is written within the bracket. Those are the standard deviation values that obtained when the 25 runs that is each of the case have been run for 25 times and the if the statistical significance is positive so that means our proposed work with the classifier of random forest is better than the others and if it is negative so that shows that is sbm is better with respect to random forest if we consider the performance metric of precision so this is the statistical validation so next we are going to conclude our work so before concluding our work let us check this particular video where not only a single robot but two robots are controlled simultaneously with the help of the brain command here you can check open x manipulator is there that is the robotic arm that you have must have been familiar till now again we have another robot here that is turtle bot 3 if we are trying to do a uh, making of a uh, automated wheelchair so this type of robot that is a wheeled robot those can be a prototype of a wheelchair so the person over here what she is trying to do she is trying to bring this bottle uh, to be placed above this turtle bot 3 and then turtle bot 3 will move towards her to uh, give her the water bottle here you can check that there is a blue light is blinking over here that shows that is that robot is connected currently and the eeg signals are continuously taken from the printed traveler acquisition system and here currently the open manipulator x robotic arm is connected in a wired mode with the desktop and the turtle uh, bot 3 it has also its own controller that is within here so you cannot check it from the outside uh, that is connected to the desktop wirelessly and 
she is looking at currently at the water bottle and uh, water bottle will be faced by the robotic arm each of the joint are being controlled and they are moved right now the gripper is activated she is trying to take the water bottle and this is also the best result we got there are several uh, lesser accurate results are there uh, so now she is trying to take the water bottle and she will right now she is controlling the robotic arm after the ending of the controlling of the robotic arm then the controlling of the wheel robot will take place so right now water bottle will be kept above the wheel robot so uh, robot is adjusted by the brain commands it's not it's not a very easy work to do with the brain commands which takes a huge amount of time and she is very much trained in this work she has uh, done this type of training uh, for a several days so she can do it so swiftly otherwise for a newcomer this is going to take a huge amount of time as uh, it's not easy to do this type of classification ভিজিবল okay no. i don't know how the connection got interrupted sorry for this and uh, uh, right now the screen, screen is not visible yes right now the this okay okay i'm sorry uh, so here you can check over here uh, uh, so let me just uh, play the video from beforehand so here you can check she is trying to fetch the water bottle and there are two robots are uh, simultaneously being uh, will be uh, controlled by her brain command and one robot is already you are familiar with that is open manipulator x another robot is the turtle bot 3 that is a wheeled robot you are trying to suppose you are trying to uh, make a wheelchair prototype so this type of wheel robot can act uh, very efficiently in this case and her brain commands are being acquired from the brain tech traveler system as she is a very trained in this particular work so she can done do this work swiftly other than this for a newcomer it's going to take a huge amount of time this blue light is there this shows that is the turtle bot 3 is connected with the computer currently this turtle bot 3 is connected with the computer wirelessly and the robotic arm is connected with the desktop in a wired fashion uh, this robot that is the turtle bot 3 or the wheeled robot is also have its controller that is within here so you cannot check it from the outside this green light that is there that the light of the controller of this turtle bot 3 and uh, she is trying to place the water bottle above the uh wheel robot so after so right now the uh, water bottle has been placed with the help of the grippers of the robotic arm so right uh, till now the robotic arm is controlled by the brain command after placing the um, water bottle uh, uh, the controlling of the turtle bot 3 or the wheeled robot will be taking place so now 
there will be action shift from one robot to the another so there will be a time latch for that as well so now the turtle bot 3 is moved and it brings the water bottle towards her so now we are coming to the concluding slides so what are the benefits of the work as we have already discussed it takes a very little amount of time to do this work uh, diversity and robustness is there that is before uh, it can be done for this work for different type of the subject where irrespective of that age uh, sex and nationality and we can do this work on a 24 hours time so the robots can be designed in fashion uh -huh. uh, hello okay should i continue hello yes ma'am yeah you can yeah. Okay. so okay so there is that it's a reliable system and then uh, system has given us very great accuracy so it's an effective system as well but uh, there are many uh, limitations or risk factors are associated with that one is the human error so that is the human will need to be trained to do this work it's not any newcomer cannot come and instruct the robot it needs a high amount of concentration as well so without having that or the familiarity with this type of robotic environment it's not feasible to do this type of bci works then there is the error uh, control errors are there uh, before doing this type of works for any hazardous environment uh, the system should be done in such a fashion that it not leading to any danger dangerous situation then unauthorized access suppose this type of work have been done in such a fashion it's going to do some restricted action so unauthorization action should be prohibited over here as well as we need to take into consideration the mechanical failures like the uh, robots can failure so that need to be taken care of and these are the two future scopes that is the inclusion of more control commands for performing more number of actions applicable to real time scenario and here we have already done the moving of arm and moving of wheelchair prototype but this in a very simple way many more complex work can be done only we have done this work to in the face the glass of water but there are other works in we do in a 24 hours of uh, day several complex activities for that we can design the system and we can incorporate more strong adaptive learning ability by designing more efficient classifier so these are the references that is the list of publications you can go through if you are interested in doing works in the bci domain with the help of machine intelligence here i have given few of my research works that ranges from the automatic wheelchair control along with this there is a work on home automation system that combine the iot with the bci then we have some works uh, along with your professor dr lydia ghost we have done that is that uh, understanding the psychological effects of the gamers like how the people are brain are going to be affected by playing different type of games then doing mental arithmetic tasks how there can be done the bci application so there are several application domains of the bci you can think about it and application can be there several are there some are feasible to do in our limited capability some can be done with having a much more better infrastructure so uh, these are the website links of different uh, ways or to one anyone of you from the students if you want to communicate further to do any type of research work so you can go through any of these websites and keep in touch we can uh, do many more interesting problems in this bci domain with the help of machine intelligence having said that uh, i would like to conclude uh, my today's presentation and if there is any sort of doubt please free to communicate yeah thank you so much dr shah for this excellent presentation and we have got uh, many questions 
from the students okay uh, let's start with bhaskar shah uh, please unmute yourself and uh, uh, tell us what are your going what are the questions good evening ma'am uh, yeah so i was just curious about that how close have we reached towards achieving full day virtual actually you are not audible can you speak hello. loud hello ma'am yeah am yes. i audible uh, yes yes ma'am i was just curious that how close uh, are we towards achieving full day virtual reality okay so that is a different research work you are talk, talking about it uh, uses it, 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 it uses vci only for uh, it uses brain computer interface for total immersion of the user into the virtual world okay so as i have already told that is uh, bci has tremendous application in different domains whatever i am working that is working on the bci and apply it to different types of robots that's my current expertise i haven't done on virtual reality so uh, you can search in the google scholar to find your answer okay thank you uh we have our next question from bashupriya bokshi are you there bashupriya bokshi yes ma'am uh, actually i want to know that how i can contribute actually uh, in this i am interested to do work on this project so uh, how can i contact with you ma'am yes uh, her question is actually she is very much interested uh, so if uh, she wants to work on this area then how can we, he or she continue yeah so you can uh, communicate with me directly or you can uh, keep in touch with your lidia ma'am uh, she can she is also very much great as she has also great expertise in this domain you can i have already given you the links to communicate uh, uh, the, the websites where you can communicate with me you can contact over there and there are several projects that are currently going on uh, you can start working on that okay thank you any other questions from anyone else no there is no other question thank you sri pona shah ma'am it was a great lecture and student enjoyed a lot we have more than 101 participants thank you thank you so much i enjoyed a lot communicating with all of you over here thank you so much and you also this opportunity interesting part is the video demonstration thank and, you and by that mechanism student is really they are interested in that project because they have lots of interaction with some robotic arms and they have they have understood what are the real applications they have with this project so i hope soon we will have many project with us yes definitely with you all also please communicate further it now we have a very happy. small token of appreciation for you Thank dr you. kush ma'am will give it to you so here is a small token of appreciation i think uh, you like it and the same will be obviously handed over to you then we will meet physically hope we will meet very soon okay oh, <coughs> thank you thank you so much so i would also like to take a moment to express my heartfelt appreciation for your exceptional presentation and your speech was truly inspiring and as uh, onidita madam said that the video demonstration live demonstration was very interesting which attracted the students uh, very much so on uh, thank you for the computer science and engineering department of iim uh, i would like to express my sincere gratitude for taking the time out from your busy schedule to be a guest speaker for today's research talk session thank you so much it's totally my honor to present in this esteemed uh, universe uh, once again thank you for your thank very thank you very much thank you ma'am thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and very good night to all of you. Thank so you, yes, good night. Yes, good night. Thank you yes. to all participants. You may leave now.